Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is 9231 Further Probability and Statistics, Topic 3, Chi-Squared Tests, Paper June 2018-23, Question 11b. A scientist carries out an experiment to investigate the quantity x, which takes the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. He believes that the values taken by x follow a binomial distribution. He conducts 250 trials. His results are summarized in the following table. Requirement 1. Show that unbiased estimates of the mean and variance for these results are 1.876 and 1.266 respectively. Correct to three decimal places. By evaluating the mean and variance of the distribution, explain why x could have this distribution. Beginning with my estimated mean, I want to, I have a frequency table, so I want to multiply my x times the relevant frequency. 1 times 22, excuse me, 0, 0 times 22 plus 1 times 83 plus 2 times 72 plus 3 times 53 plus 4 times 17, plus 5 times 3, plus 6 times 0, I sum to 469. 469 divided by trials of 250 gives 1.876 to three decimal places. That matches the value that we're asked to prove. For variance, I'm going to need two measurements that I don't have yet. One I do have, actually. I simply need to label it. 469 is sum of x. I also want sum of x squared. And so I'm going to go ahead and use what I've already written to get to sum of x squared. I'll take my x's and square each one, continuing to multiply by the frequency out front my first x of 0. For completeness, I'll go ahead and write 0 squared. When I sum these products, each x value squared times its frequency, I get 1,195. And now for variance, this is a sample variance, so I want to begin with Multiplication of 1 over sample size minus 1. I'm going to multiply my sum of x squared, 1, 1, 9, 5. Or uh, actually within the quantity, within the brackets, I'll have my x squared minus the ratio of sum of x, 469, over my n, 250. I'm going to put that into brackets. That is the mean. I could simplify and write that fraction as 1.876, although actually by doing it this way I'm getting an exact value. That 1.876 is rounded. I want to square that ratio, and my result is 1.266 to three decimal places, which matches the metric they've given me to prove. In regards to the evaluation, given the binomial with the parameters of 6 and 0 0.313, I can calculate the mean and the variance as n times p for the mean and n times p times q for the variance, q being 1 minus p n times p is 6 times 0 0.313, which is 1.878. And for variance, n times p times q, 6 times 0 0.313 times 1 minus 0.313, 0 0.6. 0.687, which equals 1.290. By evaluation, I note that the 
mean estimate on the left and on the right. They're both close. Same for the variance estimates. So I will note that as unbiased estimates are close to distribution measurements X could have this distribution. Next requirement two. The expected frequencies corresponding to the distribution are shown in the following table. Show how the expected frequency for x equals 4 is calculated. Using the binomial, my probability for 4 will be out of 6, choose 4. Multiplying by my probability 3.313 to the power of 4. Multiplying by 1 minus the probability 0.687 to the power of 6 minus 4. I want to multiply this result times the n of 250. That will apply or transform the probability to an expected frequency. And I get 16.99 which I can round to 17.0, and that value matches the value given in the table. Finally, requirement three, test at the 5% significance level whether the scientist's belief is correct. For a test, I start with my null and alternative hypotheses. The null is that the variable with a distribution of, a binomial distribution of 6 and 0 0.313 is a good fit. The alternative, this distribution is not a good fit. I will want to evaluate my compared observed values and estimated values. I want to determine whether we have any estimated values that are below 5. And notice that we do in the right two categories. The expected frequencies are below 5. If we add the 6, the category of 6 to the category of 5, the combination is still below 5. So we need to take both of those and add to the category for 4. So I'm going to have combined values of the three estimated expected measurements and similarly combined values for the three observed measurements in my chi-squared analysis. Now the number of categories I'm dealing with, two, three, four, and these three groups on the right all combine to one category, so I'm working with five categories total. One, two, three, four, five. I'll carry over my data and then evaluate to calculate my chi-squared test statistic. With these measurements, I can calculate for each category O minus E quantity squared over E. I have six, five, excuse me, five calculations. These are, uh, let me discuss, let me talk through the first one and then I'll, I'll post the others. I have observed of 22, expected of 26.3. I subtract those two, square that difference, and divide by 26.3. The result, 0 0.703.
and the other calculations result in 1.713, excuse me, 1.714 rounding to three decimal places. 1.174, next 0 0.219, and finally 0 0.004. As a reminder, recall that our 20 is a combination of three categories and 20.3 is a combination of three categories. We find those individual measurements on the prior slide. When I sum these values, I have my chi-squared statistic. That sum is 3.814. I want to get my critical value. Here I need to know degrees of freedom. After consolidation I'm working with five categories. Standard, minus one, then subtract any estimated parameters. In this case we're going to subtract one. That gives us degrees of freedom of three. In the marking scheme there isn't a reference to or an explanation for this second of minus one but it must be referencing an estimated parameter. The examiner report indicates that the question implies that the 0 0.313 is an estimate by the researcher based on his or her data. So this is a bit subtle. I want to point out that if you miss this minus one, if you don't determine there's an estimated parameter, the total effect is one point. Whether you use degrees of freedom of 3, which is the correct answer, or degrees of freedom of 4, which is what you would calculate if you didn't identify any estimated parameters, the resulting critical value will lead to the right conclusion. And I imagine that they've set this question in such a way that there's a big enough gap between the chi-squared test statistic and either of these critical values such that if you missed the identification of an estimated parameter, you'd still arrive at the same conclusion. So what we end up with is our critical value for chi-squared based on degrees of freedom of 3 for a 5% significance level up there in the requirement using 0 0.95, we get 7.815. And now for our comparison and evaluation, 3.814 is less than 7.815. As the test statistic is less than the critical value, do not reject the null hypothesis. And as I've written the null hypothesis up at the top, I will explain what I mean as applying a binomial distribution to the variable of 6 and 0 0.313 is a good fit. This completes the requirements for question 11b.